word of God has not proved it that it works. The word of God cannot fail because this is the absoluteness of his power. An open invitation to a life in the word. Because you have received the faith of Christ and you have embraced the righteousness of God through faith. Grace and peace are multiplied. That is why we lay hands on the lame and they walk. We lay hands on the blind and they see. We lay hands on the deaf and they hear. It's powerful enough to give you the answer on its first application. Arise on the wings of revelation. Align your destiny. Transform your world. This is Fenero Make Manifest with Apostle Grace Lubega. To worship you I live. To worship you I live, I live. To worship you. To worship you I live. To worship you I live, I live. To worship you.
for your glory may you draw The foulest net 
is broken I help is in the name of Lord for nothing without you without Testifies in that soul. Can I see your hand up and say, God has saved me from certain people. Certain things. But I saw.
same God. Speak in some tongues for at least some five minutes.
must break. That gate must open. Those windows must fling open. In the name of Jesus, that opportunity must come. You must get married. You must settle. You must carry a child in your womb, in your loins. Randos everybody. Your marriage is restored. Your marriage. Somebody I hear, you've been separated for at least six years, but God is rebuilding that relationship in such a miraculous way. for your children speak their names command the days ahead of them to listen to them Father, I bless you. It is well with her. It is well with her womb. In the name of Jesus, death is far from you. Struggle is far from you. Receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. It's done. It's done. Thank you, Lord. Give the Lord a mighty level of praise. Clap for Jesus. Clap for Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You may take your seats. Choir, thank you. You are the best. Praise the Lord. So if you're behind there, we arrange seats for you. Kindly take your seats on the exception of the ushers and the security team. It's an order here to take your seats, both spiritually and security-wise. So kindly take your seats so I can start preaching this evening. Greetings from Boston. We had a wonderful conference, and I want to thank Pastor Frank Mwebesa of His Voice Church for hosting us. It was a wonderful, 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 wonderful meeting. Come on, let's thank God for those guys. Now we're planning something on 2nd of September. We're going to be in the United Kingdom. We have a prayer and revival conference in London. It will be, for those of you who know the place, at the City Gate Conference Center, Ilford, London. So we're in whoever is in that area, bring the sick, bring the possessed, bring the dead, bring the deaf, bring the dumb, bring every kind of thing. I believe that God is going to do a miracle or miracles in that season. So I've announced that early so you will know. I have another trip in South Africa soon I'm going to announce. Um, 
Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So we encourage you. I hope you've been told this Sunday we're breaking world history. A record. By the way, you guys are clapping for five seconds and you think you know what it's like to clap for, for three hours. You wait. Some of you by the tenth minute, you'll be like, oh my God. But we are going to clap. If your hands fail, you stamp the leg. If the leg fails, you tap yourself like, praise the Lord. If those fail, the teeth clap. Praise the Lord. Three hours, you'll see. Then stop. Then stop. Now, the, car, the current record was two hours, five minutes. Why didn't they just do six? These guys also. We could have just done six minutes. Naimao. Somebody said three hours record that should never be broken. And I know I'm told some of you are joining us online. Welcome. We shall see whether you can clap for three hours. <laughs> so yes, we shall be in that building, but also we shall create some space outside. Um, some people prefer to clap outside and we'll have feed as well. You know, but we are excited. Anniversary is here. Rewind. Anniversary is here. Nine years of God's goodness and faithfulness. I tell people, we are going to write history in this land. And we are going to write history beyond this land. Praise the Lord Jesus. There are people who say, no, what good can come? You know, there was a time when you spoke Uganda, you, you meant Idi Amin. Do you know that is changing or has changed? When you speak Uganda, you say Fanero. Other pastors, you can mention your ministries also. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus. So I tell people, if this ministry has been a blessing to you, if I have been a blessing to you, don't give me money. Don't give me anything. I don't need anything. Carry a soul. Carry two souls. Listen to the instruction of the altar. And you're going to be amazed at how God is going to bless you. You know, there is power in hearing the instruction of the altar. Sometimes those instructions don't come from us only. Are you following what I'm saying? Write your list of 10. You know why we always insist on 10? The Bible says, bring all your tithes, okay? Now, when you study the Hebrew, all your tithes is not just money. Praise the Lord. It's more than that. Learn to reach out to people. The Bible says, do not come in the house of God empty-handed. He's not talking about money only. Hold somebody and say, come and I'll take you to the way of life. Praise the Lord. Let's do it for heaven. Because somebody did it for you. Some of you are alive because somebody held your hand. Praise the Lord. Just extend that to somebody. But we want to write history. The world will see that there is a God in Africa. You'll have things to tell your children. They disturb you, just show them a picture and tell them pray. <laughs> oh my God. I'm telling you. I met people in Europe who just look at funeral pictures and they start praying. We're going to do things that will cause men to pray. So please that day, bring the lame, bring the, bring the sick. Even if they are almost to die, bring them. Bring them from the hospitals. Let them come. You'll see power. You'll see what we call power. Crude. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. To the glory of God. And I want to welcome all of you that are watching us live on Manifest Television. Some of you who are watching us live on Facebook, YouTube. In fact, if you're on YouTube, subscribe and like i'm told when you like the algorithm refers this video to more people it does no harm to just go and say you understand some of you don't have data but it's not too much data <laughs> praise the lord jesus christ yeah i'm told when you click like it automatically recommends the video to another person so let's do that to the glory of god allow me to bless your offering so i can go straight into what brought me this evening heavenly father i thank you for the most generous people in the world we worship you with our giving today. Supply all 
our needs according to your riches in glory in Christ Jesus. And all saints said, Amen. While I was uh, preaching recently somewhere in Boston, I, I, I remember there was something I, it came to my spirit as I, pre, as I was preaching and I intimated on it and I remember that I was supposed to preach it. So in my black book, you know there's that book, white book, sorry, in my white book, where you have the list, somebody has been attacking me on, on social media we, that I have a book, it's this big. Now I'm, I'm removing, I'm, I'm reducing one sermon. Praise the Lord. There's something I've always wanted to touch. Um, it's um it touches the i think the question that we find around people and paul speaks of folk who are ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth when you hear such portions of scripture you think they're talking about the person seated in the back or the person who you know in your head has failed to catch up with the way of the Spirit. But maybe these things also speak to us. The Bible says the things that were written afore were written for your learning that through patience and comfort of scriptures, you might obtain hope. Now, the Bible says that somebody can be in a perpetual state of learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth what kind of what kind of example could i give you to explain that kind of person somebody sits in a church a church with sound doctrine of course if they're sitting in a church where they teach you know the wrong doctrine then you do you'll not blame them because what they receive is not what truth and because they don't have truth they cannot be free remember the bible tells us you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free so if somebody is not in a place of truth that the little i would judge i'm talking about people who have been introduced to the truth they have tested of the good word of the lord and the powers of the ages to come I'm talking about people who sat were around when you taught about financial provision when you taught about healing when you taught about marriage when you taught about raising children, you taught about all these things and they had them, took them in their heart, honestly learned them, but they never came to the knowledge of the truth. They learned. They could say, I learned something new at church today. But even though they learned that notion or took a revelation home, the Bible says they have not come to the knowledge of of the truth the truth definite article so we ultimately ask the question how would i be learning but i'm not coming to the knowledge what is that that i'm not coming to the knowledge of in other words in the simpler language or term why is it that i seem to know something that just doesn't work for me but i know i know it i know i know it and I realized this, that every time you examine yourself, because I have gone through such phases in life, where I know that I know something, but I just struggling to get the manifestation of it, yet I know it. I've been through that in some phases of life. I thank God that I understood this early. Thank God that I understood this early. Because it can be a very frustrating life to know something that doesn't work. To having learned something that you don't actually have the knowledge of. Because if you did know it, it would make you free. It would work for you. It's the truth that you know. This word that we teach has a process. It firstly comes into your mind and appeals to your will to subject your will to the purposes of God. And after killing you, 
what is risen out of that is a soul yielded enough to allow the word to be planted as a seed in your heart. The word of God has a process. Because if you don't understand that process, you start to appear or act or live the life of the new age teachings. We, we have a generation uh, that we call the new age and they're ascribed to the teachings of the new age. And new age teachers literally speak things from the Bible. You understand? If you will listen to a new age teacher or motivational speaker, they would say things that you'd carry scripture for if you're a student of the word. Some are just motivational. Some are gurus. They speak with a lot of wisdom. But in the end, there's a difference between them and us, and I'll explain it. Yes, they touch the laws of the spirit. Positive confession. You know, thinking positively, creating the right energies, stirring yourself to the vibrations and frequencies that you need. If you speak something in the air, plant that seed, eventually it comes to you. The law of attraction the law of vibrations, the law of frequencies, everything, almost, not every, but almost everything they speak, you could actually find scriptures to back it up. But their problem is that they subject all of this to the power of the will of their mind. Yes, I can, I can do this. I can do that. It's all subject to the will of their mind. So the, their will is their God. Where you put God and say that I lean my entire personality and trust in God to do this because he began this good work in me and he shall see to accomplishment. They remove that God and put what? Their own what? Will. So their will becomes their God. And the stronger the will is, the stronger they are able to move these things in the universe. The challenge with that is it's easy and they always open up to familiar spirits. Yes, they have the results, but they have results from another light. Not the light of the glorious gospel. Now, because of that, many of our Christians either have written everything off and say, no, you don't need to do that because when they hear some of us talk like them, they think we are new age teachers. And so they said, no, that's a new age teacher. Why? Because probably some of the aspects we touch may be related to that book you read or that video you watched. But I'll tell you, the difference between us is everything we teach leans its entire personality on God. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do according to his good pleasure. Everything that we believe, ascribe to, submit to, purpose and pattern ourselves to to the end is the working of God and we don't look at us to do it but God himself. Paul says not that this, we are sufficient of anything as of to think of anything by us but the sufficiency he says is of God which has made us able ministers of the New Testament not of the letter but of the spirit for the letter killeth but the spirit giveth life. So yes, they are leaning on their own personality for us, we're leaning on the personality of God. They are leaning on their own understanding. We don't lean on our own understanding. That's not trust. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And in all your ways, you acknowledge him and he shall what? Direct thy paths. In other words, if a man leans on his own will, he loses direction. He's directed by some spirit. He might have results, but those results are not from heaven. And there are people who don't care how they come, as long as they come. 
Have you learned something? For us, it is God. For us, it is, for us, it is God. Back to what I was trying to tell us here. I'm trying to build something here. So we say, why don't I see the manifestation of the things that I've learned? Maybe you probably see things the way the new age person sees it. You're receiving truths, but subjecting them to the potency of your human will, your own understanding to fulfill it, the strength of your spirit without a God, and that cannot work. Or if it does work, then it will work under another light. That false wisdom, the Bible calls it false wisdom. You know, a man can err from the words of truth or of knowledge by some other instruction. We have people who have not yet judged or matured enough to know when God is speaking or when the devil is speaking. He says, my son, do not heed to the instruction that will cause you to err from the words of understanding, from the words of wisdom, from the words of true knowledge. Because we have something in the world called knowledge. The Bible says that there is a way that seems rightful to a man, but the end of that is destruction. Are you following what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, and then I realized this. I realized that it is because in learning, we are not taught the order of truths. We're not taught the order of the spirit. You see? That's why I emphasized and have emphasized what Luke tells Theophilus. He says, having had a perfect understanding. If you look, read Luke chapter 1, let's begin from verses 1. He says, for as many as have taken in hand to set in order. You see, many have taken in hand to set in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed amongst us because it's one thing to believe. But God says, even though we believe, there's a certain order of things. There's an order of things. They tell you, you're going to do this. You're going to enter this. You're going to go through this, this realm. You're going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And all of those things are true. But there is an order. Certain things precede other things. Some experiences by God were designed to come before other experiences. Somebody shout hallelujah. Let's finish that and, 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 and probably I... I, I, I will help you, some of you understand. He says, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word, it seemed good to me also, like the rest had done, having had a perfect understanding of all those things from the very first, to write to thee, he says, in order, most excellent Theophilus, that thou mightest understand or have the certainty of things in which you have been instructed. In the simpler English, that you'll be established in every instruction you receive. That you'll have the power to manifest, to experience the glories that come with every word you receive by God. So I tell people I love Peter. Not because, I mean, look, not because the rest did not set in order, but he started their order and made an order even out of what they had ordered. So he, he refines me in a way when I need to understand the order of many things touching the Christ. Not that Mark does not have an order, Matthew. They all have their order and they have all aspects. But look at a man who studies the order of all of these men and establishes the sum of that, the compound picture of that and says, I saw their order, I understood it, and I could now explain the simple nuances, the differences that come through. And then I write, to you, Theophilus, that you might understand these things from the very first in their order so that you'll have the certainty of the things in which you have been instructed. Because without that certainty, regardless of how much instruction you receive, you'll not have the results of that instruction. You need to be established. You need to have a bearing spiritually that vindicates what you have learned physically. Praise the Lord Jesus. So I say to people, many of us miss the order of things. It's like there's a common scripture that I've heard 
people read and claim when they're praying. I'm not planning to teach about it because in its own, it's a sermon. If I, if I had an opportunity to teach, I'm not going to promise you because you, you disturb me. But if, if I had time to teach, I, I have written notes of it uh, when we're touching the place of wealth. But let me read it for you. In Job 22, when people are praying, you hear people say, you shall lay up gold as dust and the gold of Ophir as the stones of the brook. Yeah, the Almighty shall be thy defense and thou shalt have plenty of silver. Ha! Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you find a man who loves money, ah, that scripture, he'll stand and say, hey! It's mine. My God, my God, I lay up God as dust man to bread they go zigala de gata. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I receive it. I receive it. Glory to God. But because they miss the verses before. They begin with 24. Begin with 21. O man of God. Let's read. He says, Acquaint now yourself with him and be at peace. There but by good shall come to thee. No God. Build a relationship with him before the gold. Don't just visit Fanero when they say, Gold is mine, hey! And then you come back next year. He said, acquaint now yourself with him. Verses 22. Receive, I pray, I spoken to you, the law from his mouth and lay up his words in your heart. Understand the scriptures and receive them and do what the scriptures require. Verses 24. No, verses 23. If thou return to the Almighty, then he shall build you up and you shall put away iniquity far from your tabernacles. Next verse. Then you lay up gold as dust. Now somebody thinks they're going to skip this and go to an apostle, a certain apostle in town. A wonderful prophet to prophesy and say, speak man of God, go deeper. <laughs> Oh no, we need the prophetic and God has raised great prophets. We need the apostolic and God has raised great apostles. But divine counsel comes first. You're not going to skip all of those layers that I've just re revealed from 21 and think you're going to skip in 24 and hold there by faith. The Lord told me once, before the gold precedes consecrations. Before the gold, the consecrations precede. I want to give you wealth when I've tamed you enough to know me. Because if you do not know me and some wealth comes to you, I will lose you. So now, to a father, from a father, I would want, was it John who says, so I have no greater joy than when I see my children walking in the truth? You see, every father, every fathering spirit feels and carries that intonation. He says, for I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. If I need to raise you walking in truth, I have to keep that in mind that I know wealth can come even if you're not born again. They're very rich men in Saudi Arabia and Oman and in Qatar. They're very rich people I've seen in Europe and the United States. I once read for you a story of a, a poem, sorry, that I used to love. I did literature back in high school. And there's a, there's a, there's a poem that I read. It was by a man. No, it, the, the poem was, uh, was called Richard Corey. Was it Richard Corey? Yeah, I think it was Richard Corey. Some of you go look it up on the internet. Richard Corey speaks of a fine gentleman who was rich and 
you know, full of stature and he was wealthy with influence, power, affluence, he had everything and everybody looked at him and wanted to be like him. People worked hard and committed themselves and did this and did that. And the story says, and one day Richard Corey put a bullet in his head. He killed himself. So now, the writer is saying, this was the man I wanted to be. Yet he doesn't want to be himself. Such a wisdom in a simple poem. That some of the things you admire, one day you would get to a, rea to a realization that those were not the things you should have pursued. Some of the people you admired, and I know maturity has told you, Remember when you were growing up and then you looked at some people and you're like, I wish I was like that guy or that woman. And as you continue aging, something starts to mantle you and God starts to show you what you admired is not anywhere close to what I gave you. Help me if you are here. That is why I tell parents, don't compare your children with the neighbor. Why don't you be like Mark? Mark does his homework. Mark bought his father a car. What if I'm supposed to buy you a jet? Come on, don't limit your children to Mark's grace, blessing or grace. Some parents do that. You're abusing the kid for not driving a car, yet when he kicks, when, he's, when he starts off, he'll start off with a jet. Then you limit the destiny of your child based on the performances of your neighbor's kid. I rebuke you, parents. Don't compare. Teach the lesson, but don't compare. Teach the lesson, but don't what? Compare your children. Praise the Lord. So I've seen a man who has not yet walked in the consecrations that are required to build the wealth. And as a father, I want this man to know the truth first. To come to the knowledge of the things that are required before that money comes. Back in the year, some people brought this idea of the seven mountains. You read the book of Revelation, there's a few contradictions there. You don't see that it's actually the purpose of God to put Christians in the best offices. Because the interest of God is not just to have a Christian in the office. The interest of God is to have a consecrated man in any office. Do you know there's a difference? Do you know there are many Christians who are in very influential offices but are not beneficial? In fact, some are enemies to the gospel. Enemies to the gospel. Some of you are alive and so when a certain president who claimed to be a Christian in a certain nation openly passed pre-birth abortion. Christian, he was the one who... And that is not something that a Muslim president would pass. But he said, no, shed the innocent blood. You see what I'm saying? I was a Christian. ETC. Are you following what I'm saying? There's an order. There's an order. Tell your neighbor there's an order. Ephesians chapter 1 verses 8. Now I'm starting to teach. That was introduction. Preamble. Ephesians chapter 1 verses 8. I want to begin a bit from up to explain how we get to verses 8. God is speaking how he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. And in that line, accordingly chosen us before the foundation of the world. He brings the mystery of predestination to adopt us as children by Jesus Christ according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glory and of his grace. Then he said, in whom we have redemption through his blood and the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Verses 8, where now I want to lay my emphasis. Wherein, after having done all of that, he has abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence. God blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus and predestinated us 
before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him and in love. Check. And he raised us and made us among the accepted as beloved because of his grace. Forgave our sins by his blood according to the riches of his grace. He did all of that. And then after, he also abounded to us. In other words, he gave in abundance all wisdom and prudence. How did wisdom and prudence come to us? In which form did it come to us? In which currency did it come to us? Wherein, now he's explaining, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he has purposed in himself. In other words, all wisdom and prudence has been given to you by God by making known unto you the secret of his will. Or, in simpler language, the secret of how he wills or purposes according to his good pleasure. In other words, it pleases him first, which he has purposed in himself. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together all in one in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on the earth, even in him, in whom, because of that revelation of the mystery of his will, we also have obtained an inheritance. Ah, yeah, yeah. So you see, you cannot speak about the law of inheritance without speaking about the revelation of the mystery of his will. We're praying in Ephesians that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened, enlightened to know what is the hope of your calling and what are the glorious riches of the inheritance of the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of power which is at work in us which believe. You see, you're praying that you might know the glorious riches of the inheritance of the saints. You, the inheritance of the saints. We have inherited some. And God says, before you understand that inheritance, I want to first take you to understand that I had to first make you know the mystery of my will before you understand your inheritance. So it's one thing to tell people, you have an inheritance in Christ and they scream, yay! But then you don't explain to them the order. You don't show them the order. That the order is very clear. God would not want you to enter this place of inheritance without understanding the mystery of his will. That's how he abounds to you in all wisdom and prudence. Such that when you enter your inheritance, you enter, experience, enjoy the inheritance with wisdom and prudence. It's a dangerous thing for you to claim an inheritance of whose wisdom and prudence you have not. I rest tell my sons and daughters, it's a very dangerous thing not to carry the maturity of the gift that God has put on your life. Not to carry the maturity of the gift that God has put on your life because with much power, like one wise man said, comes responsibility. Because if without that, without that maturity, you carry no responsibility of the gift of God on your life. And in part, the reason why we've seen a many a fall and the one thing that I pray, even for myself as a minister, is that I may never get to a point where what is upon me is questioned because I have not displayed the maturity that comes with it. And if it means taking some blows, I will take them. If it means holding my peace, I will take them. I will hold my peace. If it means, you know, doing the unexplainable in understanding, I would do it because it's important to always reconcile what I carry in God and the maturity expected of me. You wouldn't expect me to open a television program and then now start attacking my attacker. No. The Bible speaks of something called the meekness of wisdom. When you're wise, you learn a certain humility. And the unstable, unlearned, and un, un, unskilled, inexperienced will judge it differently. That's okay. Because they have a God to whom to answer, like I do too. If I had time just to explain 
who a wise man is with knowledge among you. This is not what James is saying. If you're saying there's a wise man among you who has knowledge, he says, let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. It's the only way you can prove that you're a wise man with knowledge, not a wise man with a gift only of wisdom. You know something. There are people I know, they are witnesses, but I can't expose them. Even if they fault me, I can't. Because James 3.13 would not allow me. And if I did, then there's somebody in front of me would be like, eee, Apostle, also you. Direct translation. Now, praise the Lord. Somebody say, Father, help me to carry wisdom and prudence in line with the inheritance you've given me. In Jesus' name. Now, that's a deep prayer. What you just prayed right there, that's a deep prayer. Because there's a neighbor who didn't even say it. He was just looking like, If you didn't say it, say it. If you don't remember it, you'll go back to the video and forward to where I said it and repeat it for your sake. Somebody shout amen. Thank God that he has showed us this order. So I now realize that there are things that can only come in understanding the mystery of his will. In the, no, in knowing the understanding we have in the mystery of his will, rightly said. Because he has made known unto you the mystery of his will. But do you know what he has given you, what he has made known to you? He has given you the script, but do you know the script? Can you decode the script can you interpret it can you decrypt it can you demystify it are you following what i'm saying but it's given to you it's like i've given you a phone but can you use it are you following what i'm saying some think that they don't they don't even have the phone no when you hear prayer a christian praying some pray, people, christians pray like they don't have the phone god has given them and for that one, the only way for their prayer to work, you have to first help them that, to understand they've been given already. Remember the Bible says, blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Earlier he said, because he predestinated us unto the glory of his name and he has chosen us to be holy and blameless before him in love. And wherein now he has forgiven all our iniquities. And our sins he has taken away. Because of his blood. That cleansing and sanctification has to come through. So then, if a man has not yet understood the doctrine of righteousness, they cannot understand the mystery of his will. And if they have not understood the mystery of his will, they cannot understand and enjoy the inheritance available for them in Christ. But then sometimes we teach men directly to the inheritance when we have ignored the order preceding and so they say but i know it why doesn't it work no you don't know the full counsel you don't know the full counsel are you learning something everything god has committed in counsel must come to pass everything he has willed and purposed must come to pass isaiah 46 verses 9 says remember the former things of all for i am the god there is none else i am god and there is none like me declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done saying my counsel shall stand and i will do all my pleasure so if god says i will do all my pleasure and my counsel shall, shall stand not as everything he has purposed to do he must do some of you just need to understand the plans he has for you. The things he has planned for you. This is the demystification of this mystery. The mystery of his will. What is God's will concerning my finances? Do I know? Do you know if you study the will of God concerning your finances, you will never think poor. You will never act poor. You will never pray to be poor. 
because you've understood the mystery of his will. You will never confess poverty in your prayer. You will never tread with men as a poor man. And do you know what that does to you? He says, because you've understood the mystery of my will, touching finances, the inheritance is available for you. The gold and silver is available for you. Are you following me, child of God? Are you seeing how beautiful this is? Are you seeing why people miss many things? He said, but I've prayed, I've fasted, I went for this, I went for the overnight, I've been praying the whole night. Oh yeah, you could pray all you want. But at the end of the day, you're not going to frustrate order. Conviction will not beat principle. You can never be more convicted than God's principle. That's another light. Are you following what I'm saying? Very important for us to understand. That is why when you read the very scripture in Ephesians, Verses 8, read the message version. You love what the message says. The Bible says, God thought of everything, comma, provided for everything we could ever need. Everything, nothing surprises God. Nothing catches him off sight. He knows your issues. He knows all the days that will come, all the years ahead of you, your madness, your wisdoms, your craziness, your insecurities, your fears, your indifferences, your malevolent. But he still said, I know everything that you'll ever need in life. And I still planned to avail it all, to provide it all. So how do you live in a world where God has provided for everything you could ever possibly need? And then somebody tells me, I failed to get married. I failed to get married, Apostle. It hurts me. Surely, in everything, you could possibly need. Isaac was missing. Not real names. Somebody might say, aha, point of contact. <laughs> yeah, but for the Isaacs, if you're an Isaac and you're here and you know your singer of just that baptized for you right there, come and sow a seed. Somebody saw it, say he thought of everything and provided for everything I could ever possibly need. Everything I could ever need, he has thought about it. Everything you'll ever want, it's already planned and provided. Hey! My daddy, my daddy, praise the Lord. He provided for everything you could possibly need. I know you're not feeling well in your body. There is provision already. I know you're still in a one room house renting, but there's provision for a home already. Glory to God. I know your salary cannot do it. Yes, leave the budgets. Forget the plannings. They're all important. But there's a God beyond the budget. I just tell people, you know, I, we also have Christians who are so hell-bent. And I use the word hell with no fear of contradiction. Because you lean only on your strength. Budget, budget. If we did plan it, if we didn't plan it. And you ask the person, did you budget for yourself to come on the earth? Do you know how much provision has come on your name since you were born? Did you budget for you? I'm trying to tell you there is a chief budgeter. Houses you did not build. Vineyards you did not plant. Not everything coming to you is going to come in your budget. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in my budget. No, 
in glory in Christ. I'm not saying don't budget. I'm only trying to say know when not to. Know when you have to hold your husband's hand and say, Moami here. Let us look to God, the author and finish of our faith. And then you rako da bazombra de gatokala ba de gazombra de. Somebody shout amen, glory to God. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There's a gentleman I know who was in a foreign country. Met a friend. Chatted for a few meetings. And God told the friend, give this man a house. Give him a house. He didn't take his problems. They didn't give him a house because he knew how to weep. He didn't even know the guy who gave him the house had it. This guy just one day meets him and gives him keys and tells him, God told me that you need a home. Zero payment. Now, was that in his budget? That's why some of you are going to die poor. You'll never fulfill. Even your budgets will not suffice to build what you want to build. By the time you're done building, quote and unquote, you'll be 90 or 80 if you finish. Or you'll die before you finish that window. Because you're looking. Somebody say, Father, my eyes are on you. The author and finisher of my faith. Don't forget you were born with nothing. So how did that which you have come to you? Were you a good budgeter? Do you know how many people did economics? But they're sleeping hungry. How many people have a degree in business administration? But they cannot even run an ice cream parlor? A kiosk selling airtime and mobile money? Don't get me started. Don't, don't, even, don't even provoke me. <laughs> Hallelujah. He says he gave us everything we could possibly need, letting us in, verses 9, on the plans he took such delight in making. Not only did he do it, but he did it with so much delight. And now the Bible says he has let you in. That's the mystery of his will. He has let you in, in everything he has provided. That means when a man knows the mystery of the will of God, that man does not live in a world conscious to any lack. Hallelujah. I'm not saying the lack is not around you. I'm only saying you're not conscious to it. I'm only saying you ignore it. You don't live by its dictates. Somebody shout hallelujah. The Bible says he set it all out before in Christ, a long-range plan in which everything would be brought together and summed up in him. Everything in deepest heaven, everything on planet earth. It is in Christ that if we find out who we are and what we are living for. The Bible says long before we first heard of Christ and God our hopes, he had his eyes on us and had designs on us for glorious living. Part of the overall purpose he is working out in everything and everyone. So, you are a design of glorious living. Ay, 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 ay. I, say, I just feel I'm talking more to the people behind than the people in front. I feel the people behind are in front. Are you following what I'm saying? Tell your neighbor I'm a design of glorious living. Hey, turn to the other one also and tell them I'm a design for glorious living. Do you know what you've just said? Don't worry who didn't say it. As long as you told them. <laughs> Praise the Lord, hallelujah. I'm a design of glorious living. Everything in me is designed to live gloriously. My mind is of a glorious life. My body is of a glorious life. My experiences, my visions, my interpretations of a glorious life. You know, sometimes there are things I study and I'm alone and I do something a bit crazy for a few seconds. Then I come back for your sake. 
You know, Paul says, when I'm in my mind, it's for your sake. If I'm out of my mind, it's for the Lord. You can't read something like design for a glorious living. And then you come out of your car and walk back like this. No! Some spring and adrenaline gets into your legs. And... Ah! If you're a woman, the X increases a bit. Because you're designed for glorious living. Fearfully and wonderfully man. Hey! You're about to forget the spelling of failure. People will tell you spell failure and you say F, X, Y. Not because you don't know English, but God has wrapped it out of your mentality, out of your core. Mendo rego zibra dega sota lagade. Mezombra rega zoda. It's the understanding that you carry in that mystery that justifies you even to be able to extend grace to another person. Never forget this. Because you can't extend the grace of glory on your life without understanding what you're extending. Paul says somewhere in Corinthians 10 verses 12, he says, for we dare not to speak of ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. But they, they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. They're foolish. Some people, instead of dealing and allowing God to deal with them concerning the mystery or the things they must understand, they just spend all their time comparing themselves with people online. How many views does he have? How many do I have? How many people are sitting in this church? How many are sitting in mine? You're wasting time comparing yourself with another man. Do you understand? Putting yourself in measures that you don't carry by the Spirit because you don't know the measure. Paul says in verses 13, he says, But we will not boast of things without our measure, but according to the measure of the rule which God has distributed to us, a measure to reach even you. There is a, there is a measure of the rule which God has distributed to us, a measure to which we are able to reach to you. We are able to reach to you according to what we have understood. If I've not understood it, I cannot reach your heart. I cannot touch you. I can, I can speak things, but they will not change or transform you. So there's a rule of measure that justifies me. It's a vindication of the Spirit on my life to allow me. That's the rule and measure by which I reach you. And my responsibility is to expand that crown so this rule will allow me to reach many more instead of comparing myself with another man. Verses 14, he says, We stretch not forth ourselves beyond our measure as though we reached not unto you. For we are come as far as to you in preaching the gospel of Christ, not boasting of things without our measure that is of other men's labors. Because every time you boast of things, which, of which measure you carry not in the spirit, it's another man's labor. You have borrowed his lines. You're reading from another man's text. It's not yours. And it eventually shows because you're going to be speaking things you can't manifest because you're in another man's glory and labor trying to build a rule in which you will reach men. When you're that kind of minister, you'll always depend on another minister or another man to extend your ministry. It has gotten so bad that we even have preachers who will lie to you, so and so is coming. So they, they don't, they have not even confirmed with them. But because without that man's measure, their conference will not be a success. Mama, few people have understood this. Then you announce people, so and so is coming, so and so is coming, says so that people come. Don't miss this artist, don't miss this, this preacher. Let me tell you, if you're still that pastor and you're watching me, stop it. Build your measure. So people come because of you. People in Fanero cannot come because of an artist or a, a pastor. No. No. 
Because we've not built on other men's labors. Are you following what I'm saying? That means without another man's endorsement, you will not go through. No. Tell your neighbor, fortify your spirit. Build your narrative. Yes. Don't compare yourself with people. Just continue sharpening the soul. If they've not called you yet, don't say invite me also. Ah, uh -uh. Just keep doing your thing. One day they will not ignore you. <laughs> Somebody shout glory! Because how can you ignore an object designed for glorious living? Tell your neighbor, I'm, I'm, I'm ignorable. Kazungu. Somebody shout amen. So Paul says in simplicity, that's what actually qualifies me to preach to you. It's the rule of that measure. What I knew in the mystery is what I give you. What I don't know, I don't touch. That is why he says somewhere in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1, he says, for this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if you have had the dispensation of the grace of God, he says, which was given to me toward you. How that by revelation, he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote afore in a few words, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. I can't say I understand this thing fully. You can only know my knowledge of the mystery. What I understood in this mystery or after this mystery came to me, that is what I give you. That's the rule of measure. That's the only thing that qualifies me to you. If I cannot demystify and break further, to break into more knowledge and increase in knowledge in the understanding of this mystery, then I have no right to minister to you. So he's telling these people, I'm not coming beyond the measure that I'm given by Christ. He says, you've heard of my dispensation of the grace of God toward you. And he says, whereby, how, he says, that by revelation it made known unto me the mystery. So I understood it. And when I understood it, I write to you in a few words whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. The knowledge that comes out of having understood that mystery. That's all I can give you. If I don't have that, you see, even for a minister, now I understand the order that qualifies me to minister. Even if I read something, but it's not in the realm of my understanding, even if I carry the language to articulate it, I'm not qualified to preach it. Because it's not my knowledge in the mystery. It's another man's knowledge. But if I can come to the understanding of that mystery and carry my own knowledge, even if it's of another man or any other man can add to me, that's okay. Because in principle and in purpose, I will bring forth fruit like that man has brought forth fruit. Otherwise, then I'll be in another man's labor. And you can't build ministry on another man's anointing. You can't. It's like getting married in another man's house. It's hard. It's it, how? You're in your father's house and you bring a wife. In Africa, it doesn't work. It, it works in some Asian parts, but in Africa, it doesn't work. It don't work. They can't be two bulls. They wake up to warm chicken, broth, and they also warm for you. <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody's out fire. fire. And Paul further emphasizes it in Colossians now for you, to show you the order. And he says, for this cause we also, since the day we had it, do not cease to pray for you and desire that you might be filled, listen, with the knowledge of his will. In all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Remember the beginning when I read that he has abounded unto us in all wisdom and prudence. Prudence here is spiritual understanding. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will. So he prays for the church in Colossae again. Same language. He says, ever since we heard what God is doing in your life, we have not ceased to pray for you that to de and desire that you might be filled again with the knowledge of his will 
in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. In other words, you might be filled with the knowledge of how he has willed for you to understand those things. Because when you're filled with that knowledge, verses 10, that you might walk worthy of the Lord. In other words, you will live as glorious as he has spoken. You live the glorious life that befits you. Deep stuff. Next line he says, pleasing. That means you'll be pleasing God. Uh huh. Being fruitful in every good work. When that man has understood this, Paul says you'll be fruitful in every work. Everywhere you go, you'll have results. Comma. And this is the last line, which is actually the title of my message this evening. Increasing in the knowledge of God. So, no man really can increase in the knowledge of God without the fruit of pleasing God as they walk worthy of this calling because they have understood the mystery of his will. So, if you've not understood the mystery of your will, his will, sorry, there is knowledge that can't come to you. There are things you can't understand. So that is why they're ever learning, but they're never coming to the knowledge because the increase of knowledge that should come because they understood the mystery of his will is not available for them. They are ever learning, but they're never coming to the knowledge. They don't get there. They don't land. They don't score. They don't win. They don't manifest it. And then they stay stuck in just one place. They stay stuck all their lives. They know so much but they manifest very little. Why? Because they've not yet understood the mystery of his will. And because they've not understood the mystery of his will, even though they come to church every Sunday, in what would increase knowledge? Instead, they find themselves still learning. That's what he tells the church. I think it was in Corinthians. He says, I came to speak to you as mature people do give you meat. But up to today, your kernel, even as unto babes, you cannot handle the meat. There's still strivings. There's still envyings. There's still little small things, divisions among you. You can and you walk as men. Because there's a man who, once you reach a certain revelation, you can't strive with another man. Once you get to know God a certain way, you can't create division in the church of Jesus Christ. And says, if you're still the kind of person who can divide another brother to another brother, even tell a lie, he says, you're still a kind of folk. Still a still a very kind of man. You're a baby. So when I come to you, I'll still speak to you as a baby. What do babies do? They're ever learning. But they're never coming to the knowledge of the truth. So I'm saying, yes, you had that deep mystery, demystifying the mystery of the glory of God. You had the sermons. Simanya what? Simanya error of the, of the ruler. Simanya, eh? Mention those sermons you had. Hey, you, you had all these wonderful sermons. And then after that, you go in the parking and speak a word that proves you have not yet matured. And then you go on a prayer mountain to manipulate God, to reveal to you the deeper secrets of the Spirit. And God says, uh-uh, uh-uh, you're still a baby. I cannot allow inheritance here, even though it's available for you, until we mature in this wisdom, until you carry the prudence that is necessary for you to enter this. Many people listening to me, that's your problem. Not, ha, in, in a, it's the problem is you are in a wrong church. No. This thing I've just explained, it's your problem. I think you need another a special apostle, a special prophet and evangelist. This is a man coming all the way from Israel. When he touches you, uh -huh. Continue roaming. <laughs> your problem is this thing that I've just explained. And how do you know it's your problem? You have not yet understood what I was sharing the whole hour. <laughs> that is why this is a sermon. You have to again listen and listen and listen and listen until it comes from here and then enters here. Let's get to our feet. Tell your neighbor, understand the order of things. Eh, 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 eh. 
I feel many people have been delivered today. Are you feeling it in the atmosphere? Many people have been delivered. Things have just lifted. So, you know some demons don't need to scream. This kind don't go by screaming. They move out slowly. How do you know they are living? Your neighbor is more quiet than usual. Yeah. They are in surgery. And when men are under surgery, there is some anesthesia. <laughs> I am free. In the mighty name of Jesus. I've received that word in all meekness. And it changes me for good. Now raise your hands in heaven and thank God. And as you're praying and thanking God, speak to God those words you feel your heart has to. And as you're doing that, if you're on this ground and you say, I have heard you preaching, Apostle Grace, and I feel, I want to have a relationship with that Jesus you're talking about. I am certain the Spirit of God has already convicted you and convinced you. As the rest of us are praying, I'm going to ask any man on this ground who says, I want to be born again today. There is no perfect day. Because you can't tell what's going to happen next week. There's a reason why you came on this ground today. There's a reason why you were invited and you came. There's a reason why you have heard this sermon and it has spoken to you. Come right now and I pray with you. Come and I pray with you. In the secret, quiet place. In the stillness you were In the secret, a quiet hour I wait only for you. Cause I wanna know you more. Wherever you are, come and receive Jesus. As the rest of us pray. Speak in tongues. Talk to Jesus from your heart. I tell him, Lord, I want you to change me. I'm tired of struggling. I'm tired of struggle. I want to touch you. I want to see your face. I want to know you more. Sing, I am preacher. Come and get born again today. I want to pray with you. That I might receive the prize. Pushing on words, pushing every hindrance aside. Speak another tongue. If you have them, speak in tongues. If you don't have tongues, receive them now. Just open your mouth by faith. I want to know you. Yeah. Come, come, come quickly. I want to touch you. I want to see your face. I want to know you. Oh. Your spirit is going with this this evening. Manifest Boyale, we see you. Manto Bradega Zore de Debu Sierra Koshi Kananaba Rando Bredego Ziala Manifest Panyadoli, we see you. Merico Zembradega Zogaraba Serebo Shibrade Zobredego Sikanaba Zembradego Zigaraba Change Jojo, we see you. Gulu, we see you. 
Mento brade gazore de rebus. Reko si brade gazon brade gazote legede. Zore de rebo. Marara we see you. Masho brede gozi. Rako se de lebo de gazo garada. Masada la 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 de rebus. Shede de rebo. Brande gozi e reko teleka. Arua we see you. Manto de gozi brede gozi e de rebus. Hallelujah. Anybody else coming? Anybody else coming? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, those of you who are here, just repeat these words from your heart. This is your father you're talking to. Say, Father God, tell him I thank you for your son, Jesus, because he died for my sins and was raised for my glory. Today, I make the decision to receive you, Jesus, as Lord and Savior and to confess your Lordship on my life. I'm born again. I know you'll change me. You'll transform me. You'll use me. Amen. Now, do you know how powerful this prayer you've made? If you leave this earth, or when you do, you're going to heaven. But while you're still on this earth, you're going to live glorious. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, I bless you. Because tonight is deliverance. Tonight is answer. Tonight is glory. Tonight is wisdom. I rebuke and bind and destroy every spirit that has tormented you. There's somebody here you have been tormented in the dreams. Things have been strangling you at night. You spirit of darkness. Go! Leave. Go! In the mighty name of Jesus. Spirits of death, I command you to go! Somebody has a kidney disease. I rebuke you. Spirit of infirmity. Lose that man in the mighty name of Jesus. Alcoholism, I rebuke you in the mighty name of Jesus. Anger, I rebuke you. You spirit of anger and madness, lose this woman. Go! Lose her life. Lose her life. Lose her life. Lose her life in Jesus' name. And all saints said, Amen. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed this evening? Oh, and wait for your week. It's going to be glorious. Wait for this month. By the end of this year, great things await you. Somebody shout amen. amen. Now you're going to go with these ushers. I want to take your names and numbers. I want to pray with you. I want to help you understand what it means to be born again in Jesus' name. I can pray only for that child. What's wrong with that child? Hmm? Bleeding. You spirit, I rebuke you. Lose this child. Bring this child back next Thursday. She'll be healed. Thank you, Lord. I rebuke you, spirit of infirmity, in Jesus' name. Go, in Jesus' name. Last person only. Last person. Last person. The rest, please go. Father, I bless you. Huh? Okay. I rebuke the spirits of infirmity to leave you now. The power of God is going through you to deliver you. In Jesus' name. It's done. No one like you. This broadcast was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information about the great work of God, visit us on the web at www.fenero.org or download the Fenero app today and enjoy sermons, daily devotionals, and timely updates. The Fenero app, available on both Google Play and Apple App Store. You may also email us at info at fenero.org. Follow us on social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The Narrow. Make Manners.